So digital painting is basically where you get to create your pixels any way you want, layering them up, creating any kind of finish you want, any kind of technique you want, any kind of workflow you want, as long as it's not confused with digital coloring, right? So some digital painting can be finished as kind of solid blocks of color, just like some paintings are that way. Others can be really brush strokey, really textured. Uh, others can be incredibly smooth and airbrushed. And you can be very experimental as well, especially with some of these digital tools, like kind of a watercolory look, uh, a more encaustic look, using some filters, all kinds of options for you. So we've posted our, our reference photos. We've posted, or all you need to post for this is your reference photo and then your finished painting, right? This is my finished painting so far. But some of the basic steps, you do kind of a sketch and then a base painting layer, and then you can do refined painting layers on top of that, as many as you like. Usually you use lower opacity brushes, uh, custom brushes at this point. And then you can keep, keep working maybe with a secondary brush. I used a wet brush here to get to more of a finish. But that's just the pure use of the tablet and the brush tool just to make a direct painting. Now we're going to have some fun with it before we submit it. Close that stuff. And what we're going to do is open it up. Remember, this is how we had it laid out. And what we were talking about in the last videos was getting an overall finish. So when you zoom in on it to at least 100%, you're going to see variety in the types of brush strokes. Right? And if you need more of that, I'm using a wet brush to help mix between and stealing colors from myself using option a lot and this is blending and helping just to refine the finish. Now I can keep going with this just like I would with typical brushes or I can play with other ways to finish it and we don't need for this project we don't need for it to be completely finished. I just want you to be aware of how you achieve that should you want to use digital painting for your final project or for your own personal work in the future. So this now actually looks a lot like the kind of paint surface I was hoping for. You know, the same type of paint surface that when you zoom in on an actual painting, you will see. So what are some other things I can play with? Digital painting is the most direct digital art process we've learned. So as long as you are aware of your layers, I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer. You can just do things like directly paint on top of it. So I'm just going to go to some of the built-in brushes. I'll just use a regular soft round or hard round pressure. I'm going to go to about 80%. Yeah, about 100 is good. I'm going to choose some colors. And then I'm just going to kind of scribble. Maybe I'll go a little bit smaller. And fill in. And I wanted to show you one thing. You can switch your foreground and background color. Right. So I'm going to use kind of a, a light orange. There we go. And a red. But then I can use my brush settings. And I can always adjust change my size jitter, change my roundness jitter, even on just the most typical brush. <coughs> Let's try some dry media brushes. 
special effects brushes. There's just all kinds of things. Or I can use my the brush I made. But if I go to brush settings, let's see, why are some not available? You can kind of use some to work between different layers. Oh, because I'm on the mixer brush. Sorry, so you got to be on the regular brush tool. Right. There we go. And even if I just use the most typical brush, which might be under general brushes, the hard round pressure size, go back to my brush settings, I can play with dual brush settings. And this can be a lot of fun. And I can work between different brushes in different modes. I can also do color dynamics, where I can play between these foreground and background colors that I chose. So the, the brush will mix it, and it will even um, give me some differences between them based on, let's try pin pressure. So now when I use it, make sure it's working. There we go. You have to apply it to the tip. You'll see that you can make brushes actually mix colors in real time as you use them, right? Which can give you some pretty funky effects. And so if I apply that to one of my brushes instead of just the standard brush, and then play with the brush settings again with shape dynamics, with angle jitter, control pin pressure, roundness jitter. It's all about this jittering. And then I do color dynamics. Let's make it a lot smaller. You'll see how I can kind of mix between those foreground and background colors. If I wanted to mix a little bit less, I'll take that jitter down. And then it will, they'll be more similar. So it's really like sponge painting. And then I can even do dual brush, where I can pick a secondary brush to mix it with. So you just get a lot of variation that way. Now maybe that's helpful when you're doing something like I'm going to do now, which is just sketching on top. And so instead of having two very different colors, I'm going to have two pretty similar colors, foreground, background. Let's just do this. All right. So now with that, I'm going to just scribble, highlight certain things. It's always good to assert your shadows and your highlights. So now that I've kind of set that up, maybe I clear that whole layer. I'll say Command A and then Delete but I've got all the settings for it. And now when I set my, my brush, I'm going to turn off the dual brush dynamics. And I'm going to turn off the color dynamics. So I keep the dual brush. What I want to do is really establish my darkest darks. So I'm going to go right to some blacks, and then I'm just going to sketch them directly in where I think I need the, mo the most contrast. And I could be looking at my reference for this. And I can also use my, my wet edge mixer brush for this at different sizes. Whenever you change tools, it can be a pain because you want to check your brush settings. You just hopefully, with more and more experience doing this, you'll feel more and more control of these tools. And you can basically just finish off in whatever ways you want. 
So it's always good to reassert with black and white, just little accents of highlight and shadow, because that can often get muddied in all of this layered painting. You can scribble, you can make patterns. All kind of finishing it off in the ways you want. You can work between different colors. You have ultimate control and freedom with digital painting, which is a great finishing technique for other types of digital art. Right. So I'll put some hatching here. I want it to be brighter, using option to steal colors. This is a technique called monk's quilting, where you're just doing little alternating batches of linear hatching to fill in space. There are like scalloped folk art patterns you might want to use. Remember, it's all on a safe layer, so you don't need to worry about it, messing it up. These are just building texture and interest and can always be blended in and faded back. And you can always work over the top of them and kind of paint them out as needed. Okay, what about some of the mechanical ways we can make use of these digital tools? Things like the filters and the half toning. We can make use of that too. So let's just reassert some of these lights and darks. And then you can always choose whether you think they're helpful or not simply by turning them on and off. Okay. Now, Let's uh, finish it off. So I'm going to say, let's see, maybe I want a little bit more here. A little monk quilting right there. Maybe a little bit right here. All right, so now let's save our work. And then let's play with some of the, the big digital ways we can mess with it. One is to hold down Option, right, on the topmost visible layer, and then say Layer Merge Visible while holding down Option. That will merge it all onto one layer. We turn everything else off. And that way we can just do, with default black and white, this flattens everything. So now we have white as our background on a separate layer, which means we can erase all the white just with the magic wand and contiguous. And we have a finished kind of PNG floating image. Maybe I make a duplicate of that. And then maybe I save that, Command A to select all, Command C to copy it, and then close it, and then close my references as well. And then say File, New, and it will already have the pixel dimensions that will match when I paste in Command-V my painting. Right. So here's my full resolution painting on its own PNG layer. I'm going to delete this background. And now I can play, now that it's just one layer, I can play with things like filters and see if there's anything that might be interesting for it. So, this one is called Plastic Wrap. And it makes it look like, to me, like it's in melted wax, which is kind of interesting. Now, I wouldn't ever like give to a client a painting that's just 
fully filtered like this.